Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio, and this is the last, I guess, official entry in this series. So far we've made it so that we can buy and sell items, we can see their info, but we can't toggle between types of items or even toggle the inventory at all, which is kind of a big deal. It sounds like we need a shopkeeper. So that's where we're headed in this video. As a side note, we will add one additional video for just a cool little animated feature for the shopkeeper, but I'll talk more about that at the end. Let's get started. So let's begin by getting a shopkeeper on our map. I'm going to be using the yellow pawn from the Tiny Swords asset pack in case you're following along. We're just going to drop him right onto the map here. I'll rename this game object as shopkeeper and then I'm just going to create an animation quickly. Now I'm not going to get into the details of this as we've done that earlier in the series, but I will open up my animation pane. I'm just going to drag sprites 0 through 5 for the yellow pawn into the pane there as those are his idle poses. I'll then grab the first frame and just copy it again at the end so that we get a full loop and so that he resets himself at the end of the animation. I'll also just select them all and then drag this so that it is not quite so fast but actually takes place over a reasonable amount of time. Now next I just want to create an icon above his head that's going to activate when the player comes near to show that he is in fact open for shopping. For this I'm just going to use the button blue three slides as I like the way it looks. I'll just drag that onto my map and kind of size it the way I'd like it to look above my shopkeeper. In the sprite renderer, I'll set the order and layer to 50 so that it renders up above everything else in the game. And then just going to grab the gold idol from the tiny swords and put it on here. I'll then make it one layer higher than the background and just nudge that into place. And so this way, whenever the player comes close, we'll get a nice little icon popping up above him. Next, I'm just going to make this gold a child of the button and make the button a child of the shopkeeper. Now, I'd like to add a little animation to this icon so that it kind of bobs up and down when the player gets close. However, if I try to animate it right now, you'll see that we're stuck on the shopkeeper animations. So in order to make it so we can animate this independently of the shopkeeper, I'm just going to go to the button blue three slides and add a component. We'll add an animator here. Now, if I click away and then click back on button blue again, you'll see that I can create a new animation. I'll call this one shop icon animation and then I'm just going to hit the record button, go to about 20 frames in and then use the transform tool to lift this up. While I'm up in the air, I'll use the scale tool to sort of stretch it up and squash it in a bit. And then I'll just copy those initial frames and paste them again at about the 40 frame mark. Now when I hit play, I get a nice bobbing animation that looks like this guy wants to sell me something. Now if we head into the animator here, you can see that our shop icon animation plays by default, but we only want it to play if the player is actually within range. So to set this up, I'm just going to right click, create state, and we're going to call this one idle. We'll then right click it and set this as the default state. That way something will have to happen for it to start doing its animated state. Then click on parameter here and we're going to add a boolean value and we'll call that player in range. I'll then right click on idle, make a transition to the shop icon animation. And here we're just going to take off exit time. We'll also make duration zero. This will happen whenever player in range is true. We'll then make a transition that goes back. Once again, take off exit time and duration so it happens immediately. And we'll go back to idling whenever player in range is false. At this point, I'm just going to click on the shopkeeper and add a circle collider. We'll set that to trigger so that the player doesn't bounce into him when he gets close, and then just adjust the range. We're now done our setup, so let's go ahead and create a new C-sharp script, and we'll call this one shopkeeper. All right, now to start off, we can get rid of the start method, though we will need update a little later on. Let's begin by making a reference to our animator. We can call this one anim, and then we're also going to make a private bool called player in range. Next, we're going to need to detect when the player does in fact come in range, so we'll use on trigger enter 2D for this. And anytime something does enter the shopkeeper's collider, we're just going to check to see if that object has a tag equal to the player. Here, anytime the player comes in range, we'll tell the animator that it needs to set the bool, that one we just created called player in range, to be true. We'll also set the internal bool player in range to true, even though we're not using it yet. We will need this later. At this point, we can copy this method, paste it in, and change it to on trigger exit 2D. We want to set player in range both the bool in the animator as well as the one in this script to be false. Now just a little setup here, we'll first just add the shopkeeper script to our shopkeeper and then drag the animator. Remember this is the one for the button blue three slides as it's the icon we want to animate and we'll drag that in here. All right, when I get in the game, the shopkeeper's idling but you'll notice that his icon is not. However, once the player gets close, 
there we go, it starts jumping up and down. And when we walk away, it turns itself off again. Now I don't love how abruptly that jumps to a halt at the end. So I'm actually just going to click on the transition that goes from the icon animation to idle. And I'm actually going to return it to have an exit time of 1. That way we'll play the entire animation through before it turns itself off. All right, now it's time to actually make this whole shop thing work by being able to toggle it open and closed. So we'll make a reference to our canvas group. We'll just call this one the shop canvas group. And then an update we'll just do a check. If the player is in range, anytime we press interact when that's true, we simply want to get our shop canvas group and set its alpha to be one. Now in case you don't have an interact button or haven't been with us for the rest of the series, if you click edit, go to your project settings and then go to the input manager, under axes, we can create different buttons. Here I've created an interact button and set its positive button to K. So that's what we're referencing here. So anytime we press interact while the player's in range, we want to make sure to set the canvas's alpha to 1, make it block raycast, and become interactable. Now we don't just want to be able to turn the shop on, so let's create a bool here. This one will be called is shop open, just so the shop can track its current state. Then we'll make an if, and we'll just check if the shop is not already open. Then we'll run all of this logic, which will open the shop. We'll also need to make sure that the internal tracker is shop open is now set to true. We'll also just copy all of this logic, add an else statement, and then just paste it in there so that if the shop is already open, we can actually just turn it off and essentially just do the opposites here. We'll set all of these trues to false and set the alpha of the canvas group to zero so that it is transparent. The only setup here now is to make sure that we take our shop canvas and drag it into the shopkeeper's canvas group box. And before I start, I'm just going to go to my shop canvas and make sure that its canvas group begins as transparent. That way we don't have the shop open as soon as we turn our game on. With that done, we can enter the game, walk up to the shopkeeper, his animation plays, and when I press the interact button, the shop opens and then closes again. Now you notice here though that we have a little problem because say a enemy is following me, I go to the shop and turn it on. The problem is the enemy is still following me and is actually going to start attacking, which is not what we want. We want to pause action perhaps while the shop is open. Pausing the game is actually pretty easy to do, is here we can just make it so that right when we open the shop, we set time.timescale time to zero, and then when we close it, we set it to one. Now next, we want to make it so we can actually toggle between types of shops. So I'm going to make three methods here, one to open the item shop, one for the weapon shop, and another for the armor shop. Now if we go into our shop manager, we currently have a list of shop items, which is our current shopping list. However, we don't want to keep this on the shop managers. We want each shopkeeper to keep their own list. So let's actually copy this variable here for our list. That will create errors in our populate shop items as it doesn't know what list it's supposed to populate. So here we'll just tell it that it's supposed to expect a list of shop items to get passed in whenever it's called. And we'll have to make sure to send that list later on when we call this. And then in our start method, we're no longer going to automatically populate the shop as that just doesn't make sense anymore. We'll want this to happen when we talk to a shopkeeper. We'll then pop back into the shopkeeper script and we can paste that list of shop items in there. We'll head back to shop managers. We're not quite done there. Currently, we have this static event that is called whenever the shop state changes. Again, we're going to do this in the shopkeeper instead. So let's go over there and paste that in. It won't like that at first. We're going to have to add the namespace using system, and that should take care of that problem. Over in the shop manager now, we can get rid of the using system line, which we no longer need. And actually, we won't need this start method at all anymore. Now, whenever we open the shop, we'll want to invoke this new event, but you'll notice that it's giving us a little error there. The reason for this is that the event is supposed to pass along the shop manager script. However, we're no longer in the shop manager script, and so it doesn't know where that is. To fix that, we'll just give our shopkeeper a reference to the shop manager. So we can type that in here. You'll notice that that first error goes away. We can then copy this line, head down to into our else statement, and make sure that we call it again when closing the shop, just this time setting the bool to false. Now any scripts that are listening to this event will know the shop has either opened or closed, and they'll also know where the shop manager is so that they can talk to it. With that done, we can now go to our open item shop and just tell the shop manager it's time to populate the shop items. And we'll just pass along this list of shop items. We'll then copy and paste this list twice, adding a list for shop weapons, as well as another for shop armor. Now we can duplicate our earlier logic, just telling the shop manager to populate the shop, but passing in the appropriate list of items. 
Now for me, I want the item shop to be the default shop that gets opened, so I'll call that right away here whenever we open the shop, and the other ones will just be called by a button toggle in the shop itself. When you get back in Unity, you'll be greeted with a lovely series of errors. We can just go to the inventory slot script to fix this though. It's just looking for that event that we moved out of the shop manager. We can fix this by just typing in shopkeeper dot all the other stuff. And now it'll know that this event has just been moved to the shopkeeper. Now when we get back in Unity, we can have some fun with our shopkeeper by giving him shopping lists. Let's give him two items. I'm going to create a mushroom, which I'll sell for three. And then I'll also make a pumpkin. Let's give this one a price of five. I just created a couple of random item scriptable objects, one for a femur weapon, which will have a price of 10, and another is just, I'm going to call it armor. It has a price of 15. All right, I also just want to make sure the shopkeeper knows where to find the shop manager, which is just on the shop canvas. We can drag that in there. Now, the last big thing here is just to hook up these buttons so that they actually toggle between our different shop lists. I'm going to quickly just rename the buttons for ease of access. I'll make an item button, weapons button, and armor button. And since these weren't ever actually set up as buttons, I'm just going to go into the prefab and add the button component. I'll then come back out, and now all three of them will have that component, and we can actually tell them what to do when we click them. I'll start with the item button, just add an on-click function, drag our shopkeeper into the box, and then tell the shopkeeper that he should be calling open item shop whenever this is clicked. I'll then do the same for weapons, again adding on click, drag the shopkeeper in there, and tell him that he should be opening the weapon shop. Finally, we'll go to the armor button, give it an on click function, drag in the shopkeeper, and then tell the shopkeeper to open the armor shop. I'll just make sure that my shop canvas has an elf of zero again so that it begins off, and then we can test this. Now you would think everything would be working great, but there's still a problem. When we get in the game, we can walk up to our shopkeeper, press interact to open it up. However, when we go to click on one of those buttons, it just closes the inventory. Now the reason for that is simply just a problem with the way buttons are set up. And you may or may not have this depending on how much you've been following along. But if you're having this problem, we can just go to edit, project settings, and then in the input manager, you'll notice that my interact button has an alternate positive button of mouse zero. That just means that when I click the mouse to try to toggle the button, it's also pressing interact, which just happens to be the same button that closes my shop. This is one way to fix it. However, if you would like something a little deeper, we can also go into the shop itself and just change it so that the interact button doesn't open and close, but that we have to push a different button. This can be pretty easily done by just making it so that if we push down the cancel button instead, which by default is escape, it will close the inventory. Now we're very close here, except that we have to make sure to get our brackets correct. At the moment, we'll only ever close the shop if we're pressing interact to open it, which just doesn't make sense. So we're just gonna come in here, add another bracket. We're gonna change this to an else if, as we don't need to check if we're canceling, if we're still just opening it. And then we'll remove one of these brackets down below. I'm just gonna replace this one here so that everything lines back up. But now we've got one option if interact is pressed and another if cancel is pressed, and that should work nicely. Now when we get in there, things are working much better. I can open up the shop and I can now use the button presses to toggle between different types of items. It's working quite nicely. However, alas, there is one problem left, and that's just the simple fact that right now we only have one shopkeeper. So we can have our buttons permanently linked to that shopkeeper, however, you may want to have more shops in your game than just one. And if that's the case, we're going to need to just add a little more nuance to this system. I'm just going to quickly create a duplicate of that shopkeeper and drag him to a different spot on the map. I'm also going to, just going to give him a different list. Let's make him a much more expensive shopkeeper. So we'll just set all of his items to be way more expensive than his brother on the other side of the map. You'll notice that when I do that and I go in here, the first slot works great as those prices are sent directly over. However, the weapons and armor when I click on the button are not retrieving data from the new shopkeeper as they're still linked to the old one. So to fix this issue, we're just going to head back to shopkeeper where we're going to make a public static shopkeeper reference called current shopkeeper. Then whenever you open a shop, we'll set the current shopkeeper to be this, meaning this script, and when we close it, we'll make it null again so that we know there is no current shopkeeper. We're then going to create one final script for this series called the shop button toggle. Here we can get rid of the start and update methods. And this is just going to be set up so that whenever we open the item shop, it's going to check to see if the current shopkeeper is null or not. 
If it's not null, we'll just tell the current shopkeeper that he needs to call his open item shop method. We'll then just paste this for each of the others, making a weapon shop and armor shop counterpart. Now, whenever we click on the buttons, they'll actually just directly find the current shopkeeper and tell him to do his thing, rather than trying to hook them up to a specific shopkeeper on the map. Now I'm just going to add this script onto the panel on which all of the buttons are. That way the, all three of them can access it relatively easily. And we'll just change this on click method. Now we'll drag this top panel into that box. And for this I'll actually just shift click all three of them at the same time and drag the top panel into the box. Now we can just go through one at a time and tell them which shop they are. We'll make the item shop, tell it to open the item shop, the weapon to open the weapons, and the armor, the armor. Now each of the buttons will just find the current shopkeeper and tell him to open whatever type of shop we've pressed the button for. And now at long last, we can get into the game, head over to our first shopkeeper and see his usual priced items. We can toggle between the different ones and yep, they're all there. We can then head to our other shopkeeper and see that he is wildly overpriced. And even when we switch to the other types of items, they're working too. All right, I hope you found this one helpful. I will be doing one last video in the series, which will just allow us to create an animated shopkeeper who kind of bounces on the left of the window here and changes depending on which shopkeeper it is you're looking at in the game. If you're interested in that, you can look for that video in the next week. It should just be a nice quick one. Hope to see you there. In the meantime, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.